Hey there, Droya here, and welcome to this tutorial where I shall be showing you how to set up an approach and landing in the Boeing 787-10 Dreamliner within Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've already showed you how to set yourself up in the air, and so I think it's about time now I showed you how to get back down again. We are currently around 150 miles away from Helsinki at this stage, and therefore we'll now be ready to program the FMS for landing, as well as set up our ILS. I am using Simbrief for my FMS setup, and therefore it is recommended you have a flight plan at the ready to follow along. As of all the aircraft, 787 does have a working VNAV, although while not perfect, it is enough to set up our descent and landing, and therefore we shall be using that for our approach. First things first, let's zoom into the ND here, and let's familiarise ourselves with where we're currently at, and where we're currently heading to. This ring here shows 120 miles from the aircraft, this one shows 80, this one shows 40. You can zoom in and out using the range selector, and you can switch the displays using the ICAS switch. This bit you should already know. Do also be aware that the range mode here, the range view, is currently inaccurate and actually is half of what it displays. So right now we're at 160 miles ahead of us, not 320. This is 80, this is 40, so forth, so forth. So do be aware that this is currently inaccurate, but I do anticipate that being fixed relatively quickly. Right now, you can see our airport, Helsinki, Vanta, Lentor, Seymour, slowly coming in towards the end of the screen there. And as it stands, we have a relatively straight line path to the airport, with a single waypoint at Divan between us. The straight line path, however, will not do. And so what we need is a STAR, a standard terminal approach routing. A STAR is a predefined set of waypoints that is given to you by air traffic control, and what it does is it creates spacing between the arriving and the passing aircraft, as well as gives you a routing from your final waypoints to the airport, while respecting different airspace laws such as no-fly zones, any terrain that may be involved, and so it gives you an easier path from your final waypoint to the airport. And so, in order to select a STAR, what we're going to do is head over to the Departure and Arrival Index, and head over to Arrival. We are using Simbrief for our approach, and therefore, as it stands, we shall be approaching via the DIVAM4 Bravo approach for runway 04 left Helsinki. However, do be aware that your star and runway is always subject to change. And so this could be down to other traffic, this could be down to change of runway, change of winds. And so always keep an ear out if you're using ATC, just in case this will change. But for now, we'll stick with the DIVAM4 Bravo, and we'll stick with runway 04 left. So the first thing we'll do is select your approach. Helsinki is a rather well stocked airport when it comes to different facilities available. And so you have VORDMEs, you have ILSs, we have localizers and INAV approaches. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we shall be sticking with the ILS 04 left. Next, we'll set a star, which in this case is the DIVAM4 Bravo. And as you can see, that's the very top one here on the list. You may notice that there's no M on the waypoint there, so it says DIVA instead of DIVAM. However, this doesn't affect your flight in any way, as all that does is it cuts off the fifth letter of your final waypoint. So, we're coming in via DIVAM, taking the 4 Bravo routing into the runway. So, select that. We have our tra transition point, which in this case is at really. And so, at transition, what we do is then switch between standard altimeter and a local altimeter. This is something that we're talking about when we get to a little bit close to the airports. Double check you're happy with your inputs, and once you're happy, go to Routes, activate it, and execute. Now go back to the legs page, and as you can see, it's no longer just the DIVAM waypoint. We now have a wide selection of waypoints ahead of us, leading up to runway 04 left here at Helsinki. And as you can see, our approach is no longer a shut line path, there is a slight deviation in there. We do make a slightly better approach to the runway at a slightly better angle. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm now happy with that. When it comes to descents, what you're looking for is around 2,000 feet per minute at 250 knots. By doing that, you'll descend around 30,000 feet in 80 nautical miles. Looking at the ND there, the start of our star is 
slightly below 80 miles, about 60 miles from the start of our start, and the airport itself around 120 miles. And so what we're going to do is probably start on centre right about now. So what we're going to do first is take the airplane out of the nav managed speedboat and slow it to 250 knots. You can do that by pressing down on the speed intervention knob here, switching from Mac to airspeed into knots, and scroll down to 250. At this stage, yeah, we can now start to slow down. We can now start planning our next bit of descent. So, if we go back to the FMS, the last altitude that you can see on the flight plan is 2300. And so, we need to be at that altitude by the MPEV waypoint, which is around 7 miles away from the runway. And we can use that to assume that at MPEV, if we're above 2300, be too high for the glide slope, we'll miss it. If we're below 2300, we'll be too low and therefore potentially need to either level the aircraft off or even go around for even too low and dangerous levels. So, what we'll do is we'll head back to the autopilot. We'll lower our altitude to 2300 feet so you can use the knob at the back to go in thousands and on the front to go in hundreds. Once you've done that, you can then press down on the altitude hard selector. Finally, head over to the vertical speed. Select the VS and scroll down to 2000. The aircraft has now left its cruising altitude of 360, We're down to 250 knots, and we'll slowly start our descent down to the runway. About to reach our waypoint of Divam now, and just about to enter our star. At this point, with 60 miles to go, pass through 15,000, so perhaps I'm a little bit on the low side right now. So we'll increase our descent up to minus 1,000 feet per minute, so we can keep on descending, but at a much shallower rate. And with that, it means that we'll be sending at a much slower rate and just be able to, again, adjust our altitude, adjust our speeds, to ensure that when we pass through 10,000, will be slow enough, will be low enough, and will be easily able to connect onto the glide slope. Not long to go now. So far, so good. 
hits the div and waypoint, so we're now going to make a right-hand turn, head towards Pexant. And very shortly after, prepare the aircraft in for landing. We'll go back down to the FMS. We'll have one quick check of the navigation radios page. And as you can see, as we set our approach for runway 04 left, it has automatically detected that it's an ILS. It has automatically picked up the frequency of 111.9. So, you can come to the radio navigations page, check that it has picked up, as in the 787, this is automatic. So there's no need to change your frequencies, no need to change your course, the aircraft does that automatically for you. Unfortunately, the approach mode in the FMS 787 does not work, but the upside to that is the VRF speeds will automatically be given to you on the PFD, so we shall be following that during our approach, amongst other things as well. We'll talk about that more in detail when we get towards our final approach, but for now, we've set our aircraft, we've set the FMS up, our descent rate at the moment is looking fine for where we are, and hopefully, in just a couple of minutes, we'll be able to bring the aircraft in for a touchdown. Just passed through 11,000, now approaching through 10,000. So, what we're going to do is start slowing the airplane down. We'll bring it to about 230 knots. In a couple of moments, we'll see the aircraft will turn the landing lights as we pass through 10,000. At this point, it's just ensuring that you are now slow, as standard aviation rolling is. When you're below 10,000 feet, you have to be below 250 knots. The only way you can break this is if you've got ATC permission to go faster, or you'll find the Concorde, and therefore you have to fly faster. But below 10,000, standard rolling, you have to be slower than 250 knots. In our case, we are now at 246, and therefore it's slowing quite nicely. And once again, with the 787, since it's just such a nice aircraft to control, most of it is done for you automatically. Pass through 10,000, landing lights come on, tunnel flights come on. At this point, only about 30 miles to go now till we land. Passing through 9,000, not far from the ready point, where we'll then switch from standard altimeter to slow cloud altimeter, and also in a couple of moments, let's get the aircraft to establish itself on the localizer, and therefore we should soon see two more navigation aids for the runway, the localizer and the glide slope. There we go. So, as you can see, we've connected to the ILS frequency, the Helsinki. We've got the localizer, so that's the horizontal, and the glide slope, the vertical. These can be controlled via these two switches over to the right. And what this does is it, well, first of all, the localizer manages your horizontal heading towards the runway, so how far left, how far right. Your glide slope manages your altitude, how far too high, how far too low. So what you're waiting for is for two magenta diamonds to appear and to start moving towards the centre of the screen. And then with that, what we can then do is switch over to the localizer mode when the horizontal is in the middle and to the approach mode when the vertical is in the centre. Our first stage of flaps down to one degree. Second stage of flaps down to five degrees. And this point is now just a case of lowering the flaps, and slowing the airspeed down, and the aircraft needs to land. We'll go to 1,500 feet per minute. Airspeed will leave at 220 for now. Really, it's just a case of now. Slowing everything down. We're coming to land. So as you can really see that at altitude at the moment, we're a little bit on the high side. And our heading, we're a little bit to the right of the runway. But for the most part, we are currently bang on. We'll slow down to 200 knots.
to the ready waypoint now, so we'll switch over to low cloud center, so we'll press on the standard barometer button, we'll scroll down to 1005, that's the local pressure now according to the meta information, this will be different depending on where you're flying over right now. in sight. At this stage, we're now in the very final stages of approach. The localizer, the horizontal, is now bang in the middle, so you can switch on the localizer mode. The altitude is slowly calling up the screen there, so what we can do is increase our descent rate ever so slightly, just to help with that. We'll zoom once more on the ND, and that brings us to 10 mile range. The airport's 10 miles ahead of us, we'll then load landing gear, and then we shall go through our pre-landing checklists. It will be a slightly abridged version, we won't go through the full landing checklist, but in the purpose of getting you to do your very first landing in Microsoft Flight Simulator from the 787, we'll go through the basics, we'll go through what you need to have, and what you need to have set before touchdown. That's hit bang on there with the altitude, so now switch over to approach mode. We'll do we'll slow down now to the VRF. So VRF, you can see, is at 156 knots right now. We can use more flaps to help slow down. So down to 10 degrees, down to 15 degrees, down to 17, down to 18, down to 20. It's just a case of slowly using your flaps as you're slow enough the aircraft to use it to give you extra drag, extra lift and just slow you down as you're towards the latter stage of descent. So I think we'll land with flaps 25. Shan't you start to say we don't need them. As long as we hit the VRF of 156 we should then be able to get the aircraft into land without too many problems. Now watching the ND, waiting for the airport to appear at the top of the screen at 10 miles. Right, so we'll set the auto brake right now to 2. And so depending on the weather conditions, depending on the length of the runway, we'll then have different auto braking. So the higher the number, the harder the brakes will activate. I think he's got a, a relatively long runway and it's clear weather right now, so braking mode 2 should do us fine. There you go, 10 miles to go. Gear down. Now at this stage, we'll do a pre-land checklist. So, gear down, gear green, landing lights active, flaps set for landing. If you're flying with air traffic control, you want to have landing clearance at the stage. And therefore, our pre-land checklist completes. The next thing we're going to do is switch off the auto throttle, and then manually control our throttle for landing. That way, we can adjust these ourselves, and then when it comes to touchdown, we can idle throttle touchdown in the very last moments. So we'll do that now, we'll turn off the auto throttle, we'll adjust the throttle to about where the engines are right now, so in this case around 53%. We'll just hold the speed now, 160 knots. We've got three navigation aids for approach, you've got the crosshairs of the flight director, you've got the magenta diamonds of the localizer and glide slope, and also on the runway, on either the left or right hand side, you can see how snake it on the right, you have a set of four lights, two red and two white, those are called pappies. They change and your angle of attack for the runway, so three red, one white, you're too low, three white, one red, you're too high. And so with those three sets of navigation aids, you'll be able to determine how high you are, how low you are, how centered you are to the runway, before bringing it across in for touchdown. 1,000, let's pull it off. Full manual control of the aeroplane. And so it's just small adjustments. 
small adjustments to keep the aircraft level with the runway before coming to touchdown. That's around 30, 20 feet. We'll then idle the throttle and angle the nose upward slightly to flare. And as soon as we touch down, we'll set the reverse thrusters and start sending the airplane down. We've got on the high side, so we'll lower the throttle slightly, push down. Two white, two red, we'll now bang on. Throttle, and push down, thrust, thrust sets. Sense line. Eighty knots. Six knots. Thrust, thrust cuts. And as soon as you can hit the runway, it goes to the right. You can then raise the flaps. And the lights off. Tax lights on. And since there'll be a small delay between shutting off the engines and connecting you to the ground power, what we'll do is we'll hold the AP start switch for a few seconds. And at this point, now clear the runway and ready to taxi to the gates. So I hope this tutorial has helped you in learning how to land the 787-10 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I hope that it has now led you to learn how to fly yourself and bring the aircraft in from takeoff now to a landing. If you have found this tutorial helpful then please do consider leaving the video a like and also do subscribe as well. I've been completely blown away with the amount of support you guys have shown me recently. It's something that I'd certainly like to see continue in the future, especially when I do start doing more tutorials, start showcasing some of the smaller jets in the sim and potentially third party add-ons as they slowly become available to the simulator. art. But until then, I thank you very much for watching, I wish you many happy virtual flights, and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, and goodbye.